Over two decades ago in 1999, Roller Coaster Tycoon screamed its way onto PCs, letting gamers and amateur businessmen like myself live out their dreams of running a world-class theme park. While I got a chance to play the game at a friend's house when I was young, I never had a PC that could really run the game to its fullest capacity. I did, however, have a few different game consoles, so when a game that promised the player the chance to build the theme park of their dreams, I was ridiculously excited. That game was Thrillville, and there is one fundamental difference between it and Roller Coaster Tycoon. This game sucks. The only reason I'm even talking about this game is because of how my friends and other people, including myself, remember it. When I picked up an Xbox copy of Thrillville a few years ago, my roommate was ecstatic when he saw it. He even asked to borrow it because of how much he loved it as a kid. That promise of building your dream park on a console was an amazing reason to buy the game, and when we were kids, we fell hard for it. Too bad that promise was never really true at all, as you'll get to hear in just a second. Back when Thrillville came to consoles and PSP, I was hyped. I got the game day one. I 100% completed this game over the course of car rides and road trips. I even got the sequel Thrillville Off the Rails and 100% completed that too. I was infatuated with this series back then. And while we'll get to why the game is bad on a gameplay and premise level in just a bit, there are so many reasons that are like a little bit nitpicky but also really weird that stuck out to me about the soundtrack and the graphics. The graphics are bad even for the time it came out. For a game that came out in 2006, it almost looks like a PS2 launch title. The character models are nightmarish and scary, the character creator is ridiculous and limited, you choose a male or female, and then you choose if you're an adult or a literal child to run your park, which makes no sense. I decided to keep my channel momentum going by recreating Beat from Jet Set Radio. That's what inside jokes are, right? Anyway, the color palette can be best described as pastels and dull ones at that. When I think of theme parks, I think of Samsung screen levels of oversaturation and pop and colors. Not the shades of color my grandma would use to decorate her house for Easter. The soundtrack is an absolute disaster and completely unfocused. It features music from Hawk Nelson, that band you probably only remember for playing that one song with Drake Bell in the knockoff Cheaper by the Dozen movie, Yours, Mine, and Ours. And that song Suddenly I See by K.T. Tunstall, most well known for appearing in The Devil Wears Prada. I genuinely have no idea what the audio team was going for. They even did interviews with IGN about the soundtrack. It just doesn't seem like they even had a goal in mind. It's never more apparent than when you're playing a rhythm mini game to train park entertainers by teaching them a cheer routine. And then during that mini game, you don't get to choose the music that's playing. So it's a crapshoot between KT Tunstall's Suddenly I See and music by The Vines that's just kind of a little bit too hard rock for this game. On top of that, the original score for this game is hilariously bad. The menu music is a song on loop, and the only reason I can definitively say that is because the track just ends, and then it starts over, and it is the most jarring <laughs> sound I've ever heard in a game. It's insane. Uh, like, look, watch what I mean. But now let's get into the meat and potatoes of why this game was bad and was probably never good in the first place. Basically, when you start out the game, Dollar Store Doc Brown from Back to the Future recruits you to develop and more often than not, just fix an already operational theme park that are financially failing. The hook of this game is supposed to be that he created this magical fuel that will power the world one day, but he only uses it to run theme parks rather than save war-torn countries and putting an end to global dependency on fossil fuels. And that's fine, theme parks are cool too. The game really doesn't offer very much content. There's only five parks in the game with no open-ended sandbox mode, so once you finish the five scenarios, a word I use very loosely, you are done with the game. and. That's it. It's done. That takes no time at all, considering I finished the first three parks in under two hours. The opening cutscene tells you to build the theme park of your dreams, but in reality, the game has the creative depth of a kiddie pool. Because like I said, you're just taking over parks that already exist. Something that's not foreign to Roller Coaster Tycoon, but that game gave you way more freedom of what you could do. Fixing a park basically comes down to one thing. Filling a happiness meter in the park. 
To fill the meter, you have five different categories of goals where you can improve finances, you can play mini games, you can build rides, different things like that. The most absolutely buck wild one, and the one I'm going to save for last, is customer satisfaction goals. Completing objectives gives you stars, and the more stars you get, the higher the meter goes until you reach enough to move on to the next terrible failing park. Unlike Roller Coaster Tycoon, each park you take over is already built, and there's no room for growth. Each park comes with rides and stalls already built, and you can only build in a few tiny designated areas, like three at most. In order to build more roller coasters and complete the build objectives, you more often than not have to demolish other rides and other things before you can actually do it. It isn't long before you start to feel cramped and limited in what you can actually do, a far cry from the building the park of your dreams promise they made. It feels like you're just making subtle suggestions rather than actually making a difference. On top of that, you're literally doing everything top to bottom. Instead of just hiring entertainers and handymen, you have to do the entertaining and cleaning up by playing ridiculously bad rhythm games in order to train entertainers. And then you have to manually pick up puke <laughs> and trash with the handymen that you hired. So why even hire them in the first place? The build goals and financial goals are insanely easy because they are just a matter of build this, raise the price of this item, copy paste over and over. Mini games are an attempt to get you playing the bread and butter of this game, which are essentially just half-baked amateur level flash games that are clear ripoffs of other games, or one of 10 different garbage Mario Kart ripoff racing games that never feel right. For instance, there are shoot 'em ups that resemble Gradius in 1942 but are worse in every way. These games are supposed to introduce multiplayer into the equation by letting you play a party mode with your friends. Just play Mario Party. If you suggest playing this game with your friends in 2019, let me tell you, you're not going to have friends for very long. The absolute hands down most troubling type of goal that I mentioned earlier is this customer satisfaction goal. Essentially, what this boils down to is walking up to individual visitors to your park and schmoozing with them to, I guess, help them overlook how unhappy they are with your terrible theme park. Now, walking up to customers, I get, I totally get it. Customer satisfaction and customer comments make sense, but the way you raise their happiness level is insane. Their happiness is based on a scale of friendship, I guess? It's a relationship with you, not the park. So you go from acquaintance, since you're a random stranger bragging about owning a theme park that apparently isn't good, to best friend, since you've now convinced them that bragging to them about being a teenager and running a theme park makes you a swell guy and that your bad park isn't actually bad. Where things get even weirder is, you're supposed to go up to children and beat their high score while they watch? I guess to bully them into respecting you and therefore respecting your park? The worst objective in this game, and not even just this game, in the history of video games, are the customer satisfaction goals where you have to walk up to lonely girls and find them a significant other. But who could you possibly set them up with? You. You're the one you're trying to set them up with. You have to raise their relationship by flirting and bragging to them. And just talk about an insane abuse of power. Like, what? what, what is going on? All in the name of somehow raising customer satisfaction in your park. It doesn't make sense. It really doesn't make sense. All right, now go with me here for a sec. Now imagine you go out to dinner and being really unhappy with the fact that the restaurant you paid a ton of money for gave you rotten food that was twice as expensive as anything else you were going to get otherwise. So the manager approaches you and instead of apologizing and giving you a refund or just listening to your complaints, he uh, steals your phone and then beats your high score in Tetris, throws the phone back at you and then starts making out with your sister. And then on top of that, that's somehow supposed to make you feel better about wasting all of your money <laughs> at this expensive restaurant? This game went from being probably one of the fondest memories I had as a kid in gaming to being one of the worst games I ever played. And that's not even exaggerating. I cannot find one, even one, Thing to compliment this game about, and I am trying really hard to do so given how much I used to like this game. When I came into this retrospective, I was genuinely excited to play it, and I was floored at how sour I am with this game now. If you watched my first video, and thank you for that, this is the polar opposite of Jet Set Radio Future, and I mean that literally. 
This game has aged so terribly to the point where I can't even remember if this game was good to begin with. When I was trying to record gameplay for this video, I was trying to do anything but actually play this game. I didn't want to finish it, but I did for the sake of just seeing if it got any better. And it didn't. It didn't even a little bit. Essentially, difficulty just comes down to the meters that it takes to finish parks being a little bit harder to fill and making you complete a few more things. And for that reason, this game should just be purged from your collection and lost to the sands of time because just for the customer satisfaction goals and how weird they are to begin with, you shouldn't play this game. It's not good anymore. I'm sorry if you had fond memories, but go back and play it and see if you think any differently of it. Like, let me know. I would love to hear someone defend this game because I would love to go back to enjoying this game the way that I used to. All right, that pretty much wraps up the video. Uh, sorry I went a little bit hard on, on to Thrillville. Um, I can't tell if this game was actually good. It, it got reviews from like four out of 10 to eight out of 10 at various places. It's a little bit weird, but let me know what you think of the game. Let me know what you think of the video. If you got requests for other games that you want me to cover, uh, leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I'm really excited um, at the response the first video got. All right, see y'all later.